Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a connect the wires puzzle like this uh, using an Arduino, a number of headphone sockets and some LEDs and some 6.4mm uh, uh, connector cables like this. So, in this puzzle what players have to do is connect the correct pairs of sockets together. That will make the LEDs light up and when all of the LEDs are lit up um, you can make a maglock activate or a uh, siren go off or make a display come up, whatever you want. So if I take the first cable and plug it into the first socket, for example, like that. And then if I plug the other end of that same cable into socket number two, you'll see the LEDs are lit up to show me that that's a correct connection. Uh, and then I take my next cable and plug it into this one and plug it into the next one. Now in that case, nothing's happened, so I know that that's not correct. So I'll try it in the next socket along. Uh, no, uh, the final socket. Aha, that's correct. Uh, which means by deduction, if I've got this right, if I plug this socket and this socket together, there we go, all of the LEDs are lit up and the puzzle is solved. So, uh, I'm gonna show you that one more time, but this time I'm gonna show you the output from the Arduino, which is the processor that's controlling this puzzle, and tell you a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. So, first of all, let's turn on that window there and clear the output from last time. Okay, so all of these sockets are connected to one of the pins on the Arduino, and those pins are set to be inputs um, with the pull-up resistor activated on the Arduino. So what that means is that when nothing is connected to any of the sockets like this, all of those input pins are reading a high signal. Um, you want to use input pull-up rather than just input, um, because if you had them just set as input, these uh, are kind of floating pins at the moment. They're not connected to a high voltage signal, but they're not connected to ground either. So the reading would just be sort of floating somewhere in the middle. So that's why you use the, the pull-up resistor, which will, when there's no connection on the, on the socket, will pull that signal to a high voltage reading. And then every frame, what happens is that um, each of the pins are in an array and it loops through the array sets the pin to output and sets a low signal down each of the output pins in order and listens whether that low signal is corrected on the correct pair. So in this case, what you'll see there is the output on the screen there, pin 13 to pin 12, it now recognises as being connected because when a low signal is sent from this pin, it can be felt on this pin here. The other signals, when a low signal was sent out of this one, it couldn't be felt on any of the other pins, so no, it's not connected yet. I now know the solution to the puzzle, of course, so I can plug this in here knowing it'll be wrong, and you'll see that nothing happens on the state of the puzzle, nothing changes. Again, if I put it here, nothing happens. If I put it into the correct one, you'll see that the state of the puzzle changes. There's a little bit of bouncing there, just as I plug that uh, last pin in. And then if I plug the final ones in like that, uh, you'll see the little message at the bottom, the puzzle has been solved and at that point you could uh, release your maglock or, or whatever it is you want to do um, for the player when they solve the puzzle. So let me show you uh, a bit more about how the wiring for this puzzle is done and it's actually uh, thankfully really simple. There's not very many components and the wiring itself is very straightforward as well. First of all, before I turn this board over, let me just take the uh, cable out of the front there. So, uh, this board on the back here, each of those speaker pins is simply uh, drilled through the front of this thin board of MDF and the LEDs here as well. The LEDs are all sharing this copper strip at the bottom. That is a uh, common cathode, so the um, negative connector of the LED, the shorter wire from the LED, is connected through a small resistor and then onto this copper strip here. So this is just a, a current limiting resistor so that when I provide five volts from the uh, Arduino to the LEDs, it's not gonna blow out the LEDs. And then each one onto the anode, onto the longer pin of each LED, they go onto these brown cables here. And those are wired into the uh, ports 227 on the uh, Arduino. 
And then on the sockets itself, I've actually wired in um, two of the connectors. So uh, these jacks here, um, you can get mono and you can get stereo jacks. And what they uh, do on the, on the side here, you can uh, connect to the tip of the jack, uh, to the sleeve of the jack. Uh, if it's a mono uh, signal, you'll then have a single ring on the connector. If it's a stereo connector, you'll actually have a, a, another isolated ring there because you have two rings, the sleeve and the tip, can all potentially carry uh, different signals. Now, I'm actually only making use of the tip for this puzzle, um, but I've wired in uh, the sleeve as well. Um, that's not actually being used at the moment, but I might use that in another puzzle. But let's say you wanted to uh, have another LED that was lit up just to show that the cable had been correctly plugged in, for example, um, you might want to uh, wire the sleeve connector into another LED, but I'm not making use of that. And then on the Arduino itself, really simple, I've just got all of the uh, LEDs wired into uh, pins here, into digital output pins, and I've got all of the sockets wired into output pins, and then this black wire here is the ground that is going to that common copper strip shared by all the LEDs at the top. And here you can see that uh, wiring diagram as it's laid out in uh, Fritzing. Um, so these jacks here are the uh, sockets along the front. Um, and you can see I'm actually only using a signal wire to each one. And then I've got the uh, LEDs lined up on this side each one with the uh, anode connected to a cable that uh, matches the colour of the uh, connector that they're placed next to. So obviously on my board I've actually got it laid out so that the LEDs are next to uh, the connectors um, but for the purposes of showing you the circuit diagram I've just moved them to the side here. Uh, I've got a 220 ohm resistor um, just attached to the cathode of each uh, LED and that's going to this common ground connector here. Um, and then on the uh, bottom side here, I've just got a, a 5 volt relay going to a 12 volt maglock. Um, I didn't actually have that plugged in in the video I just showed you there, um, but if you look at any of the other videos I've done, um, that will show you uh, how to um, activate a, a 12 volt load from your uh, Arduino when the puzzle is solved. Um, and if you want to get a, a higher quality uh, picture of this um, uh, diagram here, then uh, look at the links in the description. Okay, so now let's have a look at the code that's running on the Arduino. Um, so, as you've probably kept familiar with now, all my code always begins with a debug defined at the top. Um, that just enables me to really quickly turn on or off um, additional debugging information if I'm trying to work out uh, if anything's gone wrong with the puzzle. And that's what controls whether that information is sent to the serial monitor that I showed you uh, in the console window earlier. Um, then we get on to the constants for the puzzle. So these are the things that are not going to change while the puzzle is running. Um, so I say the total number of sockets um, that I've got and the pins of each of the uh, that each of the sockets is connected to on the Arduino. So um, I've arranged this 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8 simply because the way up that my Arduino was plugged in, um, that's how they read from left to right. Um, there's no particular reason other than that, but I think in terms of an array moving from left to right, so that's the way I ordered the pins as well. Similarly with the LED pins here, um, this was the order. So this is the leftmost LED, this is the rightmost LED over here. Uh, and then I say the total number of connections required. Now obviously in my case I've got six sockets and every connection connects two sockets together so I've obviously got half of that in terms of the number of connections. However, there's no reason why you couldn't have uh, more sockets than that. You could have nine sockets, let's say, and still only three connections. Um, you could even add sockets to the puzzle that aren't connected to the Arduino at all. They're just dummy connectors because they will behave the same way um, from the player's point of view as any of the other sockets. It's simply an incorrect socket. Um, 
say I've done uh, six and three, but you can modify those. Um, basically, however many input pins you've got on your Arduino, um, if you're using an Arduino Mega or something like that, you can have easily three times that many um, connections, for example. Uh, and then the, here I'm just defining the array of what the pairs of pins are that need to be connected. Now, note that what I'm now doing, the indexing system I'm using here, is now based on my numbering from left to right. So if you remember from the video, I had to connect the two leftmost pins together. I then connect the next one in to the last pin, that's now pin number five, and then I connect the remaining two middle pins together, three, four. This is just, I find it easier to reference things as a zero-based index starting at the left. Um, I could have set up this array to use the pin numbers as well, but I, I just prefer using it this way. I find it much simpler to debug if I can count along starting from the left which pin I'm looking at. Um, so this is an array to keep st uh, track of the state of each of the connections and obviously at the beginning of the game we assume that none of the connections have been made so the current state is false for all of them and this keeps track of the overall state of the puzzle. So at the start of the game we're initialising the puzzle um, while the uh, players are in the midst of solving the puzzle, it's running, and then if they solve it, it obviously changes to solve. Uh, here's my setup function. So we loop through all of the sockets, and initially at least we set them all to be input pull up, and we set all of the LED pins to be output. Uh, like I said, we're using pull up, that's really important here, because when the sockets are not connected to anything otherwise, they would just be reading an arbitrary signal and it might switch between high or low just based on the, the level of sort of background uh, noise that is being received in the socket. When you set them to input pull up, um, that will cause the, uh, the digital reading at each of those pins to be high unless they are connected to ground. So it sort of it, it introduces a sort of robustness and a certainty into knowing that what you're going to get out of the readings unless they've definitely been connected by cable leading to ground, they're going to read as a high reading. Um, and then I just activate my serial connection so we can use it if we're debugging, activate the serial connection. And when we get to the end of the setup function, we're going to set this puzzle state to running instead. Uh, then here's the main puzzle loop. So I need to loop through the puzzle. Um, we first of all assume that the wires have been correctly placed and we assume that the puzzle hasn't changed state since last time. Uh, now those variables may be changed in a minute though. So we loop through all of the connections and I retrieve from those arrays that I defined at the top, the signal pins arrays, I get the pin number um, that is meant to be connected by each of the connections if the player has done it correctly. Uh, here I've just got a little is connected uh, function and that loops down to the bottom somewhere. Let's just jump down here. So I test for each pair of pins in the connections array. I set the uh, the first pin, I call the output pin. I set that to be an output. I set the a second pin as an input pin, input pull up. That's probably what it's already set to anyway, but that's just to make sure because that is the default state of all the pins. And then I send a low signal onto the output pin. So the first pin of each pair that need to be connected, I send that low signal to. And then having sent that signal, I read the input pin that that output is meant to be connected to. If the signal reads low, that means that I, because this is the only pin right now that should be sending a low signal, is the one that this pin is meant to be connected to. So if I do read that low signal, I know that this output pin and this input pin are connected. So I set uh, is connected to true if digital read is low. I then return the output pin back to its default state of input pull up and I return what the resulting value was. Um, so that just comes back up here and that was called here. So I get the current state of each of the connections in turn. Remember, I'm looping through it. If the current state has differed from the last time we checked this connection, uh, then we set the um, LED lights to be the right state. So if it has changed and it is now connected and it wasn't before, um, we turn them on. 
and if it was connected before and it's not connected anymore we turn them off we set this little state change flag as true and we also update the array that just keeps track of what the last state was for this connection if we've got um, through here so if the the current state for this connection was not connected then we know that all the wires must not be correct so we know the puzzle hasn't been solved yet because at least one of the connections hasn't been connected uh, and then we have uh, this bit here this is just purely for um, debugging purposes so if the state has changed since last time so if any of the connections were connected and are now not or weren't connected before but have been connected this frame this is what dumps out that information to the serial monitor um, just to let me know the current state of the puzzle at any point and then uh, this is the end of the loop function so if we've got all the way through the loop function this far we've been through all the connections and if all the wires are still correct that means that none of them have, have uh, set that all wires correct or false and if we're running the puzzle then the player has solved it and we'll call the on solve method or if we've got this far uh, so if the puzzle state was solved before but now all the wires are not correct anymore notice a little exclamation moment then uh, we call the on unsolve method so the way I've got this set up at the moment this is a non latching puzzle it can be solved um, but also if it was solved it can be undone again as well uh, if you wanted to make this into a latching puzzle let's say so that it is solved once and then remains solved forever um, you'd simply take out those lines there um, and then I have um, the onsolve uh, method here this is where if you wanted to um, uh, turn your maglock off or whatever action it was that you wanted to happen when the puzzle was solved uh, you'd add it in here and if you wanted to um, introduce anything when the puzzle was unsolved um, you'd add it into this section here so that's the whole puzzle um, if you'd like to access a high quality version of the uh, wiring diagram image or if you'd like to download the uh, additional documentation that goes with this puzzle that lists the parts I used and also the code download for the Arduino sketch um, please check out the links in the description below and thanks very much for watching